One of my favorite ways to demonstrate sort of the use of nested lists is through the application of image processing. Now, the way to think about image processing, especially when we're dealing with uh, sort of colors, is mixing of colors. Now, this is where we first have to do a little bit of terminology because we're very used to paint, right? You know, I happen to have just a, a clear water bottle and I happen to have uh, some three colors, uh, RGB, red, green, blue. Now, the issue is that when we're mixing something like dyes, let's say, for example, I mix red into my clear palette for a second. If we're just working off of the mixing of dyes, what we're doing is we're actually doing something known as a subtractive color model, right? I've removed some of the light uh, that is uh, potentially going to be, uh, how's the best way to describe this? The only thing currently being absorbed is the red light spectrum, and so as a result, we see red uh, light. But the issue comes in that as I begin to add in more colors, and let's actually just say I add in blue for a second. As I add in blue, and assume I am because I'm not holding the bottle up, as I add in that blue dye, yes, I'm getting, it's kind of purple, but I'm getting a very purple uh, color because now blue light and red light are being absorbed, but the issue is that this is getting darker. And just to finish it all, when I add finally that, that green mixture into this one too, the same kind of effect is going on. And as I add color to sort of my, my palette, this is getting darker and darker until it's just absorbing all of the light spectrums. The issue is that light is not like this. When we add color to light, we actually are doing an additive color model. And so let's say, for example, if I started with red light, well, if I'm just shooting out red light, I'm just going to see red light. But if I were to add green light to that, what we're actually going to get is that mix. And in, in fact, we're going to now see yellow light uh, as a result instead of the mixing of red and green to produce brown. Uh, and that's the same kind of thing. If I add red light and blue light, I'm not getting purple, but I'm getting sort of a, a lighter uh, pinkish known as magenta. And the same kind of thing comes in. When I were to add all three of those colors, rather than getting a black, because uh, I'm now absorbing everything, I'm reflecting all different light spectrums, and that's actually what produces our white light. Okay, so why do we need that to know sort of just that part first? Well, when we're dealing with image processing, we're not dealing with the mixing of dyes. We're not mixing colors and slowly some th things get darker. Uh, we're actually making them brighter. So this is actually where we get into the idea of sort of pixels and the color spectrum on pixels. Now, they typically operate off of eight bits. And if we were to go all the way back to binary representation, we can represent 256 numbers using eight bits or 0 to 255. And so when we're starting to think about different colors, so say for example Mario over here, uh, let me use a different color than blue to illustrate this. Uh, we'll go red. If I'm looking at the sky, for example, well it is some combination of red, green, and blue light that is producing sort of this color of blue. And that is represented red, green, blue, or RGB. So with this sort of representation, the red, even though you know it, it is not a red blue uh, or a red color, it does still have a little red in it. And so we can say that, oh, well, it's going to give me, we're going to say it's going to have a value of 80. Uh, and then the green is going to have, you know, a halfway point. Uh, it's going to have a, a color of 128. Uh, 
and then we're going full max on the blue 255 and it's through this combination of rgb that we do in fact now get sort of that blue and the same kind of thing goes on there's two separate colors of green going on here a darker and a lighter green they are also being represented by rgbs and you can see that the green value is the largest of the three going on there Another point, though, is that you could take a look and see that, oh, well, that happens to be just a number of rows. And going left to right, we're dealing with just a whole number of columns. And every single row and every single column is just a teeny tiny little square, even smaller than what I'm working off of, that we would represent as a pixel. And each one of those teeny tiny little squares needs to have an R, a G, and a B. And it is through the combination of that red, that green, that blue, that as you can see with this GIF, as they go, they increase and decrease, we start to see different colors. So as blue begins to increase, if red is also uh, fully maxed out, then we get a, a magenta, but if we add all of them max out, we get white light. As we remove the red, I'm just kind of following along, we get sort of this cyan color. Now, the point I was showing off just a moment ago is when we're dealing with these rows and columns, this is a little different than how we learned geometry, right? Uh, in your geometry class, you typically talked about some origin point where zero was like always at the center. And oh, you could have negative values going on there because you needed to know negative values. Well, there is no negative technically in an image, right? What's the negative one pixel of my, my graphic? It doesn't exist. So this is some of those points that we have to think about. Another one is that when we're dealing with our Y axis, we've always assumed or always play off this. And this is something that even I, you know, working in image processing, I, I forget sometimes why we always assume and think of as going up. So, you know, this is the one, this is the two, this is the three. But if we're dealing with images and we're treating them very similar to how we were working off of a nested list, we're talking about this as being our first, our, our zeroth row, and then our first row, two row, three row, four row, five row, etc., all the way down. So as a result, our positive Y values are actually going down instead. So the, the larger uh, number in Y, instead of it being really high up there, it's actually really low down there. X stays the same. It is still just left to right in our world. So this would still be our one, still be our two, three, four, and five. So you can sort of see that this X, if we're playing off of my sort of uh, analogy, yes, it's a, a rectangle, but work with me, would be effectively at the two row, at the two sort of column, if you will. So with that in mind, again, we can take any one of those points and we can start to make different color combinations. And if we work off of just a hard, this is the only color, uh, uh, you know, I'm only doing red, then yes, we get these very bold, bright colors that we're all very commonly seeing, you know, going on there. And then we get some combination of them both. So red and green would produce yellow. But it is through, again, some combination of the red, green, and blue that we get all of these nicer, you know, softer colors that you would, you know, study color theory to know why, like, this yellow is better than that yellow. I don't, I don't know. Okay, so we now have done a deep dive on color theory. You're all experts in painting or painting with light. Ah, so how do we start to take this application and apply it to Python and nested lists. So the way to think about this is again, we're dealing with a multi-dimensional list. So in our case, this is still a row with some indices attached to it or some row with indices attached to it and some column. So 
in theory, these are just kind of going on there as well. And they're all separated by commas. And one of the wonderful things about this is we could do math, right? They're just numbers and math is just playing with numbers. So something like grayscaling an image. Well, if I can traverse all of these indices, well, this just happens to be three numbers. And if I were to add those three numbers together and divide them by three, so uh, let's see, that's a 10, two, carry the one. Uh, let me just cheat and do this. Skip ahead if you don't want to do math, but come on. You're, you're watching a programming video, so of course you want to do math. Uh, so we're dealing with a 12, carry the two, uh, 12, 13, uh, so 1, 2, 4, 5, so 5, 32, divided by 3, that's 1, 3, 2, uh, drop that down, so that's a 7, 7, 21, uh, 2, 2, roughly speaking a 7, 7, 7. I'm not going to uh, use fra uh, decimal places here, but... Roughly speaking, I could say that, oh, well, let me just put a 777 in the RGB values. And once again, the way to think about what will happen is if I increase all of these colors to, and we'll have to wait a second, if I increase all of these colors to be the same value, I'm going to have some variation of either uh, white or black. And so, 255, 255, 255, we get a white uh, color that's changing really quickly. And we're doing that again with grayscaling. If we did that with all of our pixels, not just that one that I was working off of, but all of them, uh, you could see that, again, there's that 177, and I threw it together in, all the, in the red, green, and blue, and so we get some kind of gray. And if I did that with every single pixel, I would just get, once again, a grayscaled variation. And so you can see that in effect. So this happens to be Montreal Convention Center. I was taking it while I was there. Uh, if I were to average each pixel and then replace that average with that color, that's exactly what I would get. Okay, all right, now let's do it. Let you know. So there's a lot going on here and I will actually walk through it as we go through it. So. The big ways to think about this is the first thing we are operating with is something known as the PIL library. PIL is a uh, Python image library, but the entire purpose is to take pictures, PNG files, JPEG files, and convert them into the nested list that we need to work off of. Now, it isn't just as fancy as a nested list, it goes into a little bit more of the object world, but we can start to work off of it. The next line is dealing with uh, just what my file name is going to be. I happen to have, mm -hmm, oh, that's not what I wanted. I happen to have an image in my little folder called peppers. And if I were to look at that, it's a plethora of peppers, reds and green peppers and you know banana peppers, but that's all it is, just a bunch of peppers. So I'm just going to go ahead and call that as a variable. Uh, that way I can work off of this and we'll deal with file IO a little later on, but the idea here is now I need to store that file, that digital ones and zeros in my computer or in my program. And I can do that using the pill library. So in this case, uh, image.open will say, oh, well, give me the file path, and here's the file path, and okay, I have my image. Now, this has a number of different uh, settings and functions and behaviors and states uh, associated with it. For example, the width and the height of the image stored as a list. So I can extract out, say for example, the width by doing img.size and then square bracket zero, that'll give me the width, the width of the image, and then the height of the image, same thing, image.size, square bracket one, that'll give me the height 
the image. Now, once again, this is stored very much in a nested list situation. It's not 100% the same as when we're just dealing with nested lists, but it still has rows and columns. And so for this first line of code, we're dealing with traversing each row. And you can see, so I've got a variable I'm gonna call row, and I am creating a range from the zero to wherever the height is. Remember, y starts at the top, or uh, y's zero starts at the top and goes down as we traverse through the image. And then same kind of thing. I have something for the columns going on with my image. So for each row, or for each row, go through each pixel over and over and over again. Now we do need to extract out colors and we can do that by doing a few things. Now to start, this is known as unpacking a variable or a list. And the entire idea to this is if I were to just, let me comment all of this out and just print get the color at that particular row and column or that pixel. I'm just going to see a list of numbers, right? My reds and my greens and my blues at any particular pixel. The problem is that, well, you know, I know that they're always going to be RGB, red, green, blue. And so what I can do in Python is I can do something known as unpacking them. Red, green, blue. Now what this is going to do is again, if I look at that first pixel, uh, 10100, what I'm effectively saying is take that 101 and put it in the red variable. Take that zero, put it in the green variable. Take that other zero, put it in the blue variable. And same kind of thing, if I were to print red, green, and blue, I should see the 10100. Zero, zero. What did I do wrong? Oh, one too many braces. I still see the 10100. Zero, zero. Well, guess what? Now that we have those numbers at those pixels, we can play with math. We can do any calculation that we happen to want. So uh, what I happen to have here is just taking, for example, each one of those pixels and saying, only give me 75% of that value. Nothing terribly crazy. I'm, you know, making some weird, uh, you know, darkening uh, image or filter, but I'm not doing anything outlandish. And so now I take those and I create a new list uh, or tuple, as it is called, uh, with that new color, with that new red, that new green, that new blue. Now this last little uh, 255 is just representing transparency. How transparent do I want this particular pixel? Uh, 255, not transparent at all. It is very opaque, uh, so not see-through is what I'm, I'm trying to get at there. And then I'm just coming in and saying, oh, well, let's take whatever new color I've created and at that same row and column, make that the new color for that particular pixel. And so when I magically take my Pepper's image with the green and red, well, the red and green peppers, and I run this, I should get the nice little notification, and I'll get this. This is hideous. Uh, I don't like this color at all, but you can see it's like got a hint of red going on there, uh, but not quite grayscale. Well, let's actually take that idea of grayscale, right? We, we showed that we can do it, so let's produce a gray or gray, uh, either way works, uh, and then say red plus green plus blue divided by three, take that gray, save it, run it, Oh, got a float. Ah, I did this earlier. Uh, so it is only expecting a, an integer number. So whatever we get 
Uh, again, just like when I did it by hand on the PowerPoints, you know, we are going to ignore uh, uh, decimal places. So we're going to just drop that by turning it into an integer. And what we should see is a grayscaled version of our peppers. And that's exactly what we get. And we can continue on with this through a number of different ways. So, uh, for example, just to skip ahead, you can do other types of mathematical notations. So, for example, blurring an image, very similar. You just take uh, sort of the, the pixel that you're currently at. Say, for example, you wanted to be right here. I want to blur a, an image. Then I would just look at my neighboring pixels and do the exact same average instead of doing uh, RGB and dividing by three, take all my two, my reds, take all these reds, for example, add them together and divide them by zero, or in this case, nine. You do that for, again, then the green and then the blue, and you would get a blur effect. And that's where you could play with some, again, this is more showing you applications. But the idea would be, well, now if I worked off of something like a radius, or how big do I make that box, how many pixels do I average around me, I could work off of different blur filters. So our one pixel blur filter doesn't do much of a change, especially for a, a, a high resolution image. But if we were to increase that to something like uh, 10 pixels, now you can see, that, oh, well, we're starting to get a blur. And if we continue on and we did something like 100 pixels, uh, in my case, we're dealing off of something that is, uh, all right, you know, not 100%, but we're still seeing sort of the colors going on there. You can even go even crazier. I know that uh, Instagram and you know Snapchats and uh, TikToks have gone crazy, and sepia is no longer the the coolest filter in the world. I think it's making yourself looking like a Pixar person, whatever. But if I wanted to do something like sepia, I just take my old red, and if I followed this formula of taking the old red times it by uh, 0.393 and uh, old uh, green. In fact, you know, let's just throw this on there and see what we've got. I've got it on the opposite screen here, so you don't have to worry. So uh, new red is again going to be red times 0 0.33 plus green times 0 0.769 uh, plus uh, blue times 0 0.189. Let's just make the new red, new green, new blue. And then let's see, old red, that's a little lower. A little lower. 168. And then the new 2, 2. 534, 13, boom. Okay, so we've just gone in. We've uh, done this crazy new formula of sepia. So new red, new green, and new blue. So once again, we take it, we compile and run our program. Do, do, do. Did it, yeah, uh, same kind of thing. Forgot to convert it into integers afterwards. So we were to take that, boom, boom, save that, run that. Congratulations, here's my sepia filter for the peppers image. Uh, go forth and create the new Instagram, and when Facebook buys you out, I'm expecting, like, I don't know, 1%.